Now, from the studios of Into Tomorrow in Miami, this is ITTV. Hello, tech fans, and welcome to another edition of our ITTV Updates. I'm Dave Graveline. Don't forget to swing by our website at graveline.com or intotomorrow.com and do take our new listener survey. We send prizes out each week from random surveys that we select. And while you're at it, go ahead and give us your opinion by answering our poll question. Again, it's all on the website. We're mixing things up this week, apparently just to confuse me a bit. It's a segment host swap on Into Tomorrow this week. So let's get things started now with Rob Almanza as he takes a look back at this week in tech history. Rob? Thank you, Dave. Never thought I would be doing this for Chris. In 1928, WGY-TV in Schenectady, New York, began the first schedule of regular TV programs, a very short schedule. WGY offered programming to the upstate New York audience three times a week using the mechanical scanning method, which was not to be the wave of the future. In fact, it was electrical scanning developed by Philo Farnsworth that would make television available to the masses. In 2003, the Department of Treasury came out with a color $20 bill by counterfeit. It was the first time U.S. currency featured other colors than green and was dubbed as the most secure note ever in the U.S. Some of you may be familiar with our next story. In 1869, the final spike was laid in the tracks of the Transcontinental Railroad across the United States. With money from the U.S. Congress, two companies started building a line from the Mississippi River to California. One company laid tracks west to east, while the other headed west. The two sides met at Promontory Summit, Utah, where hundreds of workers and onlookers gathered to watch the final spike, made of gold, driven into the tracks. And finally, in 1847, Mormon pioneer William Clayton got tired of counting the revolutions of a rag tied to a spoke of a wagon wheel to figure out how many miles he had traveled. So while he was crossing the plains in his covered wagon, he invented the first working odometer. Thank you, William. That's our look back at This Week in Tech History. Now back into tomorrow, here's your host, Dave Graveline. Well, thanks, Chris. I mean, Rob. Boy, I am confused. I wonder how different the world would be, though, if miles were counted as rags. Imagine your GPS saying, in point 100 rags, turn left. Thanks for the odometer, Mr. Clayton. Are you serving in our U.S. military anywhere, including, for a change, here in the U.S.? If so, and you're on AT&T Wireless, or plan to be, we might send you one of these cool Palm Trio 680 smartphones. Just visit our website at graveline.com or intotomorrow.com for details and perhaps we'll get one of these to you right away. We do have several to share with our military friends. We continue now with the product spotlight segment and Chris Graveline in for Rob. He's got a pretty sweet laptop that you're going to drool over. Chris? Oh, sorry. You know. I'm very fortunate to be able to play around with a lot of cool toys here for the show. One of the latest is the Area 51 M15X notebook from Alienware. Probably one of my favorite things about this notebook is the Alien Effects program that lets you customize lighting effects. You could, for instance, have the logo pulsate. You could make the light pipe around the screen change from one color to another and back again. This software even allows you to use different schemes depending on which program you have open. I have this one set to change the light pipe to red when a new email comes in, so I can see it from across the room. They have an optional backlit keyboard, although the one we have doesn't include that, which I've noticed can make the keys a little hard to see in a dark room. From a performance standpoint, I was pretty impressed with this machine. It's running Windows Vista Ultimate on an Intel Core 2 Duo processor at 2.5 GHz. It's shipped to us with 2 GB of RAM, which I'll probably upgrade to the 4 GB max to boost it a little more. But for the video and audio editing that we use it for constantly, it's got plenty of power already. One thing I had to get used to is the lack of buttons. They've replaced them with a set of quick touch sensors that allow you to change the volume, turn Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on and off, launch the Alien Effects program, and enter stealth mode, which is a low power mode to help with battery life. One other impressive thing about it is the Smart Bay. Right now, I've got the DVD burner in there, but you could pop it out and replace it with a second hard drive or an additional battery, which I would do if I had one. It includes the usual USB, Ethernet, and audio connections. This particular notebook has an HDMI output, which makes it possible to connect it to an external high-definition display with both audio and video on the one cable. One thing I found to be both good and bad is that it has the newer and faster Firewire 800 port. 
The good part, as I mentioned, is that it's faster than the older Firewire 400 port, but the bad part is that the two use different connections, so I've got to buy a separate cable in order to connect a video camera to it before I can do any editing. The bottom line, this is a heck of a machine, and starting at just under 1500 bucks, you can get a good deal of power. It's a workhorse, especially on all of our Into Tomorrow remote broadcasts. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go back to drooling now. Thanks, Chris. I hope you'll let me use it sometime. It's pretty cool. This week's Product Spotlight is brought to you by the Avery Wizard Software for Microsoft Office. For your free software download, visit avery.com slash wizard. We want to hear from you, our viewers, and Into Tomorrow listeners. Send your questions or comments to askdave at graveline.com and let us know of any product or service you'd like us to play with and report on for you. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week right here as we bring you further into tomorrow. I gotta take this. Uh, hello? hello.